And I watched so many videos where people would hold an electricity meter and they would be wearing their shoes and their numbers would be really high. And the second they took those shoes off and touched the earth, it went down to zero or near zero. Hello and welcome to another episode of Goddess Hangs. Episode 115. Woo! <laughs> we made it! We made it. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. I have a lot to be excited about this week. I have a lot to share, but first of all, I'm Sadie. <laughs> I, and I'm Juliet, obviously. Obviously. And we created the Goddess Hangs podcast to inspire you to live magically and mm -hmm. epically and bigly and boldly and a whole lot of other stuff that we've been feeling really fucking crystal clear on lately. Yeah. We've just, your girls have been working like busy little squirrels getting ready for winter behind the scenes. I tell you what, like we've just been doing a lot of cool shit and we're excited to share it with you all. <laughs> we are gathering those nuts. We are, we are burrowing nuts. them away. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my God. Who sent it to me? Somebody, I feel like Irene sent me this video, so she probably sent it to you too, that someone broke open their wall and there was like yes. 5,000 pounds of acorns <laughs> in their wall. That's literally That's what's us. in our brain right now. That's perfect there's depiction. Just, there's just more and more and more of that creativity flowing <laughs> through us. <laughs> Squirrel hangs. We have squirrel hangs. We have a, a really cool... I'm excited because today I'm going to sit back and learn about grounding from Juliet. And mm -hmm. the little bit I know about it is what has inspired me for a long time to prioritize it. Not now because I live in the frozen tundra, but back in the day. Um, so I'm excited to learn more about that and feel even more inspired and make it a priority in my life. But before we dive into that magic, Juliet, what's new with you? Well, the, the most obvious thing that's new with me is I'm wearing a fancy hat. It's so cute. <laughs> this is my grandmother's hat. I think she bought it in 2001 or two when it was trendy. It's pink mm -hmm. cashmere. I saw it in her closet like 10 years ago and I said, you're not going to wear this anymore, right? <laughs> She's like, take it. So I, I want to see a picture of your grandma in that hat if you have one. My grandma... I talk about her in the past tense as if she's not like alive and lives 12 minutes for me. My grandma was the most fashionable, trendy, hip with it grandma. When she walked down the aisle at my parents' wedding, she did wear a white wedding dress, but my mom didn't care. <laughs> People thought that my dad was marrying her. <laughs> oh my God. Anyways. That's how much chill my mom has. It's like, didn't it make you mad that your mom wore a white? She's like, I don't care. Um, and that's my feeling about weddings in general. It's like, <laughs> as long as I'm getting married, um, you could all wear white. So, okay. What's new with me? For Valentine's Day, Victor got me sick. <laughs> you were going to say cold. six and it was going to be a number of something, but sick. No, he got, gave Boo. me a cold. <laughs> Yeah, so that's been fun, but it's not. Well, terrible. he also we if, for those of you who are on IG live with us on Valentine's Day, he also got you a big, beautiful, giant big, bouquet of flowers. Beautiful flower bouquet, and he made dinner. And we we did what we do every night, which is we we have a lovely dining table, but we like to sit on the floor. Well, he sits on the couch. I sit on the floor. We set up our meal on the coffee table, and we watch two episodes of Modern Family. <laughs> That's our spicy night. I love that. <laughs> so that's what we did for Valentine's Day, and it was exactly what I wanted. It was so fun. Um, the next thing that's new with me is you sort of said it. I have never worked so hard in my life. I have never, like, up until, but, but with, like, the thrill and the obsession and the excitement, like, up until 2 in the morning, sleeps for three hours four hours, up at six, doing it again for 15 hours. Like, like it all became so clear 
hugely mm-hmm. in part due to so many downloads that you had. And my biggest excitement is like, make it happen, make it happen, make it happen, make it happen. <laughs> and um, I am a big like cross it off the to-do list person. So this would this might take a normal person about six weeks to complete. I will get it done in about eight days because <laughs> well, I, I want to. Like the beauty in our partnership because I have a lot of great ideas, but I have a really hard time like getting myself to do them. So one, I have you to, to do th- things alongside with and then there's like an mm-hmm. accountability for me because I'm like I, mm-hmm. I, can't, I have to you know Juliet's working hard so I'm going to too you know like it <laughs> helps me not procrastinate because I'm such a you know I could float around in the, the great idea land the downloads the understanding all day long but implementing them has always been hard for me and so that's it's like we we just have this beautiful and you have brilliant downloads and You'll, oh, thank you. I'll have my download and then you see it and zhuzh it slightly and then it's like pristine and we're just the fucking dream team. I just, I just can't say it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> claiming it. Claiming it. Which leads to my next... <clears throat> excuse me. Which leads to my next topic. So I did a post about this today. There was a little segment on uh, Fox News and... That's my least favorite news network. They they can just be mean. And CNN isn't perfect either. But anyways, um, there was this whole segment and they were um, tearing apart Chelsea Handler, who made a, like a Valentine's Day joke reel about like my life without kids. And it was just oh, meant yeah. to be like playful and funny. And I thought it was cute. And, I, I think um, a bunch of people hopped on that trend because I thought it was pretty funny, too. I loved it. It was like, I wake up whenever I want. I drink a glass of wine. (laughs) I go back to bed. (laughs) Right? I was like, precious. Um, You know, everyone's everyone's dream life gets to look different, right? Like for some people, a dream life might be getting up at 6 a.m. and like running around with your kids in the yard. Like everybody has the right to have a different idea of a perfect day. Well, anyways, some people on Fox News did not think so. And they turned it into this um, rant about how society has been lying to women, telling us that like we, you know, we need to go out and be girl bosses, but like we can't do it as well. And our uteruses are drying up like tumbleweed, (laughs) like tumbleweed. (laughs) And he was like, and you know, women just aren't the same as men. Like if you've ever seen a woman try to back up a car, you'll know that. And I was like, ba- you could have at least done something that has some like backing, like maybe lifting a really heavy thing. Like typically <laughs> men are better at that, like backing up a car. <laughs> you know how many accidents I've been in? Like one and a half my whole life and no Zero. major ones. Like one, most of the, the, the one full one was snow and ice. And that's only happened once. Mind you, that I know how to drive in fucking God. snow and ice. And then one time, (laughs) and literally (laughs) crawling traffic, I was taking a sip of water and my peripherals, the the other lane started inching forward. So I slightly lifted my foot off the gas, not thinking, and I just lightly tapped the car in front of me. And that doesn't count. (laughs) No, that's not an accident. That's a love tap. And that's as much of an accident as I've been in. When I said active God, you guys. <laughs> when I said active God, do you know that in like all insurance policies, like renters insurance, homeowners insurance, fire insurance, like there's always like it excludes acts of God and they define what an act of like if you have like renters insurance, go look at it because you'll be like what? <laughs> <laughs> you could argue that to be anything, I feel like as well. Yeah, like, and I well, think that's why they put it in there. Like, mm, I think God did that one. Like, well, no, but I pay for the insurance. Can you please replace the carpeting? I pay that for the insurance. God. So if God does this to me. <laughs> oh, my God. So I saw this clip and like, like anybody, right? I go through my motions of like being sad, being hurt, being mad. And then I come out the other side and I'm like, you know, I've spent a lot of my life trying to do everything just right, 
trying to take up just the right amount of space, trying to be agreeable, trying to make sure I don't ruffle any feathers, trying to like mm-hmm. trying to color inside the lines. I mean, I was the most like obedient little child and it definitely was nature because my parent my dad especially was like a free spirit wild child. My mom definitely grew up that way as well. <laughs> like <laughs> they didn't like box me in or make me feel like I had to be this way. I just came into the world feeling this way. Mm -hmm. And to realize that you can try to play their game, like the patriarchal game, right? And you can do everything right. And they'll still rip you in half. I'm Mm -hmm. like, you may as well make your own rules. You may as well go bigger. And I think I wrote on my Instagram, like, like, you may as well go bigger in your magic, in your self-expression, in your confidence, in your income, that triggers people in your visibility, in your passions, in your sensuality. Like you may as well mm-hmm. go bigger in everything because even if you do everything right, it's still never going to be enough. <laughs> so yeah. find like the joy and the like find the gold and the freedom in that. Find the freedom in that. That's sort of like where it took me. And I was like, you know, and Sadie, you said something to me yesterday that has like lit a spark under my butt where you said like you need to take a stand for something Mm -hmm. you need to take a stand for something like you can't just walk around and and be like wishy-washy and I definitely kind of dance that dance because I'm like well I want people to know exactly what I mean by this and that I'm not discounting this other thing and um yeah so yeah I'm working on like going bigger going deeper being braver and like realizing it's funny it's like you a lot of people realize this earlier it took me till like 31 <laughs> to be like you know not everybody has to like love or agree with everything i believe in my lifestyle like whatever yeah. um so i'm excited to go even bigger in everything that i'm doing personally and i know that it's like all symbiotic with the ways we're going bigger with our podcast and with our memberships and like everything in that realm. So I just feel like cracked wide open in this. I feel liberated because mm-hmm. I because I was like, oh, I'm feeling oppressed. Like this is such an oppressive thing to say. And then I was like, actually, what the, what they think of me doesn't matter. Obviously, it's <laughs> it's threatening to imagine a world where like women make a lot of money and and don't feel like their sole purpose is to be like a baby factory. Um, <laughs> as much as I want to be a mother, you know, I'm excited. Yeah, for but it's. It's just, (laughs) if it doesn't matter anyways, you may as well do what you want. (laughs) So that's something that came to me this week. And I'm having fun playing with that. Well, it's like, you know, as long as you're always being big and bold in integrity with like your own heart and you're doing your best and you're learning along the way, like Mm -hmm. showing up imperfectly is a lot better than not showing up at all, right? Like, yeah, it's it's never going to go according to plan. You're never going to please everybody. You just have to, you just have to live. Like, it's, yeah, I, I think that for the first, you know, when did we start this? When we were like 28, 29, 28? Mm-hmm. Like, for those first 28 years of my life, I had big thoughts in my head, but it never, it's, I'm, I want to share something I journaled today. Cause it was like, it just never felt like, Oh, I could never be the kind of person that has a podcast that people care about or, you know, like it was just, mm-hmm. it, it's like, it's not true. Every single person that has their own unique desire, like that's there for a reason. And it's scary to go after it. We know that and you're not uh-huh. going to please everyone all the time, but nope. I always feel good about the way we move and the way we shift and it's, it's, you know, it's part of the journey. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it takes, and it takes seeing, I mean, this is why representation in all facets means everything because mm-hmm. it takes seeing somebody else do it sometimes to be like, oh, that's possible for me. Mm-hmm. You know, like, it took seeing some other people do this and like pave the way first. Like we always sort of stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. I think that's the saying. Mm -hmm. So 
you never know, like it's not just for your own healing and, and journey and purpose to go bigger and deeper in your magic, whatever that looks like to you. But you have no idea the ripple effect of that and how that's going to impact other people and that there's like actually a, a much greater purpose to it. Um, your purpose can truly be because I want to, like that can be your why and that's valid. You don't need to add like acts of service to it for it to be valid, but it becomes an act of service, excuse me, without you even trying. Mm -hmm. It does. And so I'm just like floating in that energy and it's really fun. Yeah. Like show the people you love in your life what's possible. I, I mean, people in my life I've seen do things that I don't think they would have considered before I started, you know, kind of putting myself out there in new ways. It's so cool to just be like, oh, wow, like I, I, I didn't make that person do it. I don't get credit for it. But my my willingness to put myself out there lit, lit a little spark over there and over there and over there. And like, it's amazing. The ripples effect we can have just by being true to ourselves. It's it's. I'm just going to start spiraling and getting emotional because I, I just. Can you, can you imagine if some, because we would have psychics who, they weren't really psychics. Like we would have psychics <laughs> walk into the store where we worked, like all the like yeah. crystal stores just obviously attract a particular audience. And um, I will tell you, for those of you who are developing your psychic abilities, okay, mm -hmm. or you are psychic, which is all of you. Um, don't just walk into random buildings and like announce it and then start reading people. Like that is a no-no. <laughs> that is theatrics. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, imagine if somebody came into the store on a on a on a day when we were prepping for Christmas sales, and they said, You girls are gonna be best friends. You're gonna start a podcast that goes to the top. Rated charts. We're a top rated podcast now, by the oh way. God, that's in right. Eleven countries, which is <laughs> so exciting. Um, you're going to create programs and memberships and content and magic that like changes the lives of women everywhere and people everywhere. And it'll be your full. It'll be your like full time life. I'd be like, get out. <laughs> Get out of here. I'd be like, please leave. Fuck you. I'd be I'm like, no. <laughs> I'd, I'd be, be like, like, you're not uh, getting a okay. discount. <laughs> it's just wild. So we share all that to say, you know, everything's possible. Make it happen. <laughs> and that's what's new with me. What's new with you? Oh, my gosh. Well, I was also just, I feel like I have like fuzz in my lip gloss, but... I've also just been feeling proud of us. This I've been working a lot. How good of a job we're doing. <laughs> this is our <laughs> annual review that you get to listen to. <laughs> We've been working really fucking hard, but it's it's amazing how um, just life all happens in divine timing because I also know that all of the behind the scenes, the workflows, the reorganizing, you know, back of house mm -hmm. systems, all of this stuff that we're doing. One, we've talked about, we're kind of laughing. We're like, man, we've really just been getting by. Like we're making this harder <laughs> on ourselves. Like, <laughs> duh, we just need to like do this and this and this. So that feels really good. Um, but it's all happening in this like divine timing because I know that like we're going to be so set up when I like leave for my trip that like we're both going to be able to just like chill so much more because right now we're both working like sun up to sundown. Well, longer mm -hmm. actually because the days mm -hmm. are short and it's because it's winter. Um, but one of the things that um, I would just had this download like oh this needs to get an update is our uh free witchcraft for beginners guidebook that i'm sure a lot of you if not most of you have uh already downloaded and it was a 20 page guidebook which is like wow 20 pages for free that's amazing and my intention was just to judge it a little bit <laughs> i was like it just needs a little bit of judging it's not gonna yeah i had no intention to change it a lot 
Okay. And so we like kind of talked about this and then I, I, we got off a call and I was like sitting in front of it and I just felt so stuck. I just felt so uninspired. I just was like, and we've been working a lot. So it makes sense that, you know, energy runs out, you need to rest. And, and I felt this very strongly. Like I had this sense of urgency in me that was like, no, no, you have to do this today. Like you talked about it, it needs to get done. But then there was this other voice that was like, no, what you're going to do is you're going to do nothing for the rest of the day. I think I like made like a TikTok and then I was like, and my, that voice was just like, you're going to get your cross stitch out. You're going to turn on this, uh, you know, podcast. You're just going to chill. You're just going to get inspired. Like, that's it. You're just going to chill. And I was like feeling kind of panicky. I was like, no, no, I, like I have work to do. <laughs> but I was like, okay. I trust the process. I trust it. So I did that the rest of the night. And honestly, it was like 4 p.m. at this time and I had been working most of the day. So it was fine that I stopped working. This is just me stuff. But anyways, before bed, I did some tapping, which we do a lot of in the Alchemy Collective and Psychic Circle EFT tapping. If you haven't done this already, just type that into YouTube. You'll thank us later. It's so good. And I just did it on like even though I'm feeling creatively stuck, you know, I, I know tomorrow is a new day. I'm going to be so, you know, just overflowing with creativity, blah, 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 blah. And then I, I didn't even go to bed that early. I think I went to bed at like 11, which usually I go to bed at like nine. But anyways, I woke up at 4am and I was like, it was like my eyes just sprung open. (laughs) I was laying there. I was like, eyes wide open and I was like, the whole book was just in my head. And it was not judging the book. It was completely erasing it and writing a new book that is now 51 pages. (laughs) Unbelievable. And I was like, this definitely is not what a typical freebie is for a business, but it is for us. We're keeping it free. I'm so proud of it. I'm so excited about it. And it was so cool. So this this month in the uh, Alchemy Collective, in the Psychic Circle part of it, we're focusing on our ego and moving energy, clearing blocks. And so this just felt so validating that like what we're teaching this month, I used in such a huge, obvious way. And I really like trusted the process and leaned into the rest I was being called to and utilize the tools. And it was just so validating to be like, oh, like, you know, I'm always using these tools, but Mm -hmm. just as like sort of a maintenance thing. And sometimes you kind of forget how much you're doing for yourself when you feel, I mean, thankfully feel pretty good most of the time. (laughs) And to just feel, have felt so stuck and frustrated and to be sit with that feeling and be like, all right, I, I recognize you, whatever and use all of those tools to unstuck the energy and just i i literally from like 6 a.m to 2 p.m just wrote i just wrote a whole book like it was it all came out at once i was reading it back again today doing some final edits i was like i don't even remember writing this it's just like channeled through me i was like damn <laughs> this is really good <laughs> it's phenomenal it's like at some point we're going to have to charge for it. <laughs> so get it now. <laughs> get it now. <laughs> it's so phenomenal. So yes, we're going to have the link to get that to get Sadie's 50 page ebook. <laughs> and please DM me, DM Goddess Hangs. And let me know, let us know how much you love it because I worked really hard on it. I'm really proud of it. It's it's a guidebook. It has so much information. And it also is like, a, I, I took so much time to like reference specific episodes and link that all in there for you for the different topics I wrote about. So there's a bunch of like stuff I wrote to teach you. And then you'll see the exact episodes to go to for whatever parts are like lighting you up the most. I mean, it's like, it's, so it's unbelievable. <laughs> so it's proud so of good. it. <laughs> Sadie wrote a book. She wrote a book. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And then what was really exciting was then later in the week, we hosted our uh, energy clearing integration session with the Alchemy Collective. And it was 
like so powerful. I literally cried after I was moving energy, but we were doing like, uh, and I was really proud that someone said this. They were like, this feels so practical. Like this feels so easy that I can do it in my day to day Mm -hmm. life. And that's, that's the point of the alchemy collective is showing you that, um, you know, creating magic in our lives gets to be really simple. And it's not always easy to show up for the simple things that can change our lives. That's what we're here for, to offer you uh, accountability and support and, you know, cheering you on. But it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to take a ton of time. It's just about learning to be so incredibly aware of your own energy, of the energy around you. And there's a rainbow. Look at that. My mom put uh, rainbow catchers in all these specific spots in the house Aww. for, I I think it's like feng shui. <laughs> They're still all there. Um, but look at that. We've never had a rainbow while recording before. That's my new sign from her is the rainbows. So whenever there's a Aww. rainbow. And what I was about to say is that it felt really special because... I shared a lot of the energy moving techniques that since I was a little girl, my mom would do with me because the girl struggling with anxiety her whole life and was just so shy and had a really hard time like going to school and and things like that just because of anxiety and shyness. Um, And so I just felt like it was like my mom teaching the class. You know, it was something so close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And there was such a big, beautiful reaction from the group, like after saying like it was life altering and so powerful. And it, it was just like every, every every class we teach in that thing. I, afterwards, I'm like, that was my favorite class we ever did every single time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's like, it just feels so good. And I just feel like we are really walking into exactly how we're meant to show up as mentors and teachers. We're we're just figuring it all out and it feels so good. And I'm so proud of everyone in the Alchemy Collective and in our, you know, community coming to these calls because all the magic that's like happening and shifting, it's not us, you know, it's, it's you, it's us sharing tools. It's us, sharing um perspective shifts but like the magic beyond that is like the way that they've all been showing up in their lives and just i'm just really just completely head over heels in love with this space that we've co-created with each other and with everyone in it and I just, you know, I just really feel like I'm living in my purpose. That's been my theme lately is just like, damn, I'm living in my purpose. And I have Mm -hmm. been, you know, since we started all this, but it's hitting in a new, deeper way. And it feels really fucking good. So again, there's a new 51 page free witchcraft guide in the show notes. And if the Alchemy Collective sounds really exciting to you, that's in the show notes too. Uh, We meet six times a month, which is so fun. It's twice for the new moon and the full moon. It's twice to focus on intuitive development, and it's twice to focus on mindset and manifestation. So this is like the most well-rounded. If you're like into manifestation, but you want to do it from the witchy perspective, like that, I don't know if there's anything out there like this. It's so powerful and it's so fun. And I just, I'm obsessed with it. I am too. (laughs) I am too. Sadie wrote a book. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And then the other things that are new with me. Oh my gosh, I'm leaving in two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Maybe one. Maybe one. We'll see. I know. Maybe in a couple days. (laughs) (laughs) Trying to figure that out. Um, but it's it's starting to feel like very real finally. Like I know I'm going to New Zealand, but like and like you know, like when you book like you have your trip planned for Italy, does it feel like fully real yet? No, not even a little. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like and then I'll be like, okay, I'm going to New Zealand. Wow. And then I'll be like, and I'm not coming back for six months. <laughs> Like, it'll be like, I'm going to New Zealand for a couple of weeks. And then I'm like, 
oh no, I'm going for a long time. And like, I want to, and I'm so, this is like, it's just, this is what I wanted to share some of my journaling today because like, this is the fucking biggest dream I ever had. And it's like overwhelming to be fulfilling it. Cause I'm like, well then what's my biggest dream after this? It's exciting. <laughs> but this is like the ultimate thing. I always was just wanted to go like live abroad, traveling around and, and working from my laptop and it's the whole like we always say when we're manifesting like this or something better because when I had this dream in the past it was like oh like I finally found like a remote worker job that you know pays a de decent salary but like this is even better because I'm mm -hmm. going to be teaching magic and manifestation from all over the world like it's so cool I'm just like oh my god it's the whole like life beyond your wildest dreams i'm doing that you are you're living it you're embodying it's it crazy and i wanted to I, I wrote in my journal um let's see so i was just sort of journaling on just sort of the energetic shifts that i've had since i came home because it's been a lot obviously right went through a big breakup <laughs> I've already been living basically out of two suitcases and now I'm so going to downsize again to a, even less space to live out of. But I just kind of was writing about how I feel like I'm living in such integrity for myself, choosing myself, choosing what's best for me, even when it's not the fun thing right now, like deciding to come home instead of just like get another apartment or find a sublet for a few months. Like I knew that like I needed to come home and I needed to have just no distractions, just be home, be with my family and all of that. And, and I just wrote, now I'm here. I'm living in integrity with the version of me who is living her dream life time with my family and about, about to embark on a six month travel adventure. Like, oh my God, I literally wrote it like that. Like, oh my God, I'm literally living a life beyond my wildest dreams, dude. <laughs> this is how I journal. <laughs> dude. It feels like it's taken forever, but only three years ago, I was miserable driving an hour and a half to and from work. And I fucking hated my job. Sorry to be dramatic. I was so miserable and I never thought all of this would be mine. We are recording our 115th episode today. We've done psychic readings for freaking celebrities. We've mm -hmm. filmed on major TV shows. We signed our own TV deal. I'm about to live and work abroad and I teach magic for a living. I think three or four years ago, if you asked me my dream life, maybe it would be with a soulmate or a family or feel more financially stable than I am right now. And I'd be married. Oh, I wrote that, but I created a damn business and like the most amazing community alongside Julia. And it's just wild. We did all the hard parts. Now we get to have fun and live creatively and just allow the rest to come. Mm. I was like, damn, like, I'm like, you know, when I started my manifesting journey, I'm like, I'm going to be a millionaire when I'm 30. Am I a millionaire? No. <laughs> Not yet, but and I am now living in integrity with that version of myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know it's just, we're just doing such a good job and I'm proud of us. And I really reflected on that. Like it really has been a quantum shift since I left LA and I decided to do this and it wasn't the fun decision. It was the hard decision to say, I'm going to go be at home in the dead of winter for two and a half mm -hmm. months or however long it's been, but it's just so cool. I'm so proud of us. I'm so proud of you. I hope you all didn't hear me sucking on a cough drop during that beautiful <laughs> emotional. <laughs> and then the last thing I wrote, it's that it's been really cool. There's been so synchronous, so many synchronicities because I still have my moments freaking out about my trip. Like I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm leaving for six months. Oh my God. What am I gonna actually all pack did I prepare enough to you know do mm -hmm. am I gonna forget something like all this stuff natural stuff but it's so amazing like I like all these like random people like it'll just pop up on my for you page or people I follow they're like all of a sudden in Australia and New Zealand and I'm like why are you guys there and then 
it'll be on like random TV shows. Like I randomly flipped to the channel that had like an office marathon going on. And it was, I didn't even remember this was a thing, but like Jim's like, Oh, I want to plan a trip. Where do I go? And he ends up picking New Zealand because he wants to like leave Hmm. town when Pam's about to get married. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just so cool. I'm just like, the universe keeps being like, no, no, we told you to do this and you're listening and you're going and it's all good. Like you're taken care of. So it's just, we're feeling aligned. We're feeling good. Absolutely. We're getting it. And you know how we could feel even better? (laughs) As I spit out this thing. We practiced grounding. Oh, wait, before we do that really quick, speaking of travel, speaking of it's equally scary and exciting to choose to go on a big gigantic trip (laughs) i'm pooping my pants every other day i mean like i'm really doing this and if you want to poop your pants (laughs) (laughs) if you want to take a big old dump (laughs) right in those pants (laughs) <laughs> we're really good at advertising I can't, wait, I can't wait until like bloom sponsors us and <laughs> that's just the thing every influencer sees being sponsored with right now bloom i'm not bloated anymore um no but <laughs> this is not a bloom ad this is a come to bali with us ad i wonder, I wonder if you figured that out yet probably not <laughs> If you want to stink up your house with joy and excitement, <laughs> if you want to drop heat, <laughs> we know a button you're ready to click. It's the come to Bali button. <laughs> We're going to be spiritual, inspiring, and a little silly all at the same time in Bali with Goddess Hangs. Let's cut this and put it in every episode from now on. This is the Bali (laughs) ad. (laughs) Just kidding. We had this whole plan like, oh my gosh, we're going to like record a Bali ad. I was thinking like, oh, I'll throw some like ocean waves behind it. This is better. Nope, it's just Sadie making fart noises. (laughs) mouth and asking if you want to shit your pants together (laughs) okay this is living in integrity with who we are this is living in integrity (laughs) all right we've invited you on a world-class trip we've shared what's new with us are you ready for the episode (laughs) come to bali link in the show notes (laughs) come to bali we will literally have the best time together we you get will. to spend a whole we've never done a retreat that lasts a whole week and yeah. i'm gonna tell you when i'm international when i'm away from home i get loopy it is the version of me that you want to spend time with i am crying laughing mildly course, wild mildly <laughs> mildly wild wink wink slightly okay. more than mildly moderately she's she is uh Growing. She's evolving. The Pokemon has evolved to moderately <laughs> wild. <laughs> Extra medium. Extra medium. <laughs> that's how I <laughs> that's how I always describe that's the kind of I like, you know? Wild vanilla sugar. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Remember everybody had to smell like warm vanilla sugar or cucumber in 2004? Yes. Do you? The Bath and yeah. Body Works? Yeah, it smells. And then what was the, and then the fancy, the the Victoria's Secret is that love spell? I think love spell. My mom never let me buy anything from Victoria's Secret, but I did. I would (laughs) score a couple Bath and Body Works lotions. (laughs) I would shave my legs with like a razor from 1924. Practically, it was like whatever, like. Bic blue razor my dad had just shoved in the back of a drawer. I would get razor burn galore. And then the worst thing you can do, I'd put that scented cucumber lotion on it and then it would inflame everything. And then I'd go to school and, you know, 14 year olds being classy as they are. What happened to your legs? What's wrong with your legs? Okay. Okay. Let's reel it in, Janelle. (laughs) All right. So grounding. (laughs) Grounding. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> but I first, really a word from from <laughs> Bloom. <laughs> I was gonna say I want to make one more fart noise. Oh, okay. Here, get it out of your system. Go, 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 go. Okay. <laughs> I keep looking at my own face and think. <gasps> okay. I'm What's done. that spell? <laughs> Bali. <laughs> Next week we will be burping the alphabet, but it's gonna spell out B A L I B A. You I ain't can't. got no alibi. You're coming. Hey, <laughs> you're coming. All right. Let's get into this. 40 okay. minutes in seems like a good place to begin. <laughs> Shout out if you're one of our listeners who just immediately skips ahead to the 35 minute mark. Welcome to the show. Okay. So let's talk about something that comes across as hippy dippy, comes across as like, yeah, okay, Juliet. But you know me. I have scientific data. I watch documentaries. I went to uh, scientific journals. I went to sciencedirect.com. I did it all. Science Direct. So, <laughs> science Direct. The place where you go direct for science. Okay. So earthing or grounding? We talk a lot about like, go outside. That person left that nasty comment. Go touch grass. Actually, a brilliant suggestion. And it inspired this episode. Thank you for caring about my health. Thank you so much. Um, so earthing or grounding is essentially connecting the skin on your body, your hands or your feet, ideally, to the earth. Touching grass, <laughs> touching dirt, touching mud. This even works with cement, with rocks, with sand, like at the beach, like burying your feet in the sand, um, touching a tree, touching the leaves on a tree. Um, it does not work on asphalt. So just keep that in mind. If you're like, I'm going to walk through my street, stay on the sidewalk. You'll get the benefits, but not on the asphalt. Mm. So this whole concept of grounding or earthing, came from a man named Clint Ober. Raise your hand. Who of us here... No, <laughs> on a scale of one to Big ten. Big fan of who's her Daddy name? Clint. Who's her <laughs> Cl- da- Daddy, Daddy Clint. Daddy, uh, come over here. Clint Ober. Okay. <laughs> come over here, Daddy. 30 years. He spent 30 years. Is this is this your reliable source of news information? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> we have references. So we do. So Clint spent 30 years in the communications industry, particularly with um, cable TV and then eventually satellite TV. And he lived in Montana. He grew up in Montana. So installing cable TV and doing all the wiring was quite a task because there was just so much land in Montana. So it was like really like an all hands on deck. Like he really got a pretty in-depth experience with all the space between homes and everything. So he was working his job. He was doing his thing. He understood it inside and out. He turned 50 and all of a sudden his health began to decline. And so he took a step back from the cable industry. He took a step back from everything. He was pretty much considering like, I guess this is a sign for me to retire. Like his liver had like an abscess on it and there wasn't really much they could do other than like an experimental surgery. So he had that surgery. He spent a year recovering. Um, But as he began to feel better, he sort of was like, had the spiritual awakening as many of us do after some, after like our health and our life, um, Mm -hmm. like changes sort of in the blink of an eye. So he had this spiritual awakening and he realized, he's like, you know what? I have all these possessions. I feel like king of the mountain. I have this huge home. I have like millions of dollars of art that I've collected. And he's like, I just don't want any of this anymore. Like there's just got to be something bigger, something deeper, something more meaningful. And so he decides to get in his RV with some of his belongings and start traveling. And he starts in Sedona, Arizona, and then things start to download into his brain. So just to back up from the cable job, and I learned, I don't know any of this. Um, I mean, I'm a woman, I can't back up a car. What do I know? So <laughs> what do I learned, know? <laughs> <laughs> who am I to even speak? So from his cable job, he learned that 
In order to have a clear signal, clear picture, and no static, you have to ground everything into the earth. This is the same thing for telephone lines, power lines, all the lines that you see on uh, telephone poles, there's a connected line that's underground hmm. that I never knew of. So, and the reason, there goes the pen. And the reason that you do that is because it maintains a negative surface charge on the cables and it prevents static buildup. The whole point of that is if lightning strikes the uh, cables outside your house, it means it's not going to conduct it into your home and zap you. So it prevents lightning from mm. entering your home. Um, so every cable that is wired above ground has a concurrent cable that is wired b below ground to ground it. Oh. I didn't know that. So that's like the literal definition of grounding. So he, you know, had spent 30 years in this industry and it began coming to his, his mind where he's like, well, what if we're not grounded? What if like we're electrical mm. beings? What if we're not getting grounded? What if we're not connecting to the earth? So he was still in his recovery and he would have to take Advil or some type of painkiller every night in order to sleep. And he did an experiment. He took a like a rod and he put it into the earth and he connected it to a, I think like a copper coil and he ran it through his window and he put it on his bed and he taped it with like aluminum tape. And when he slept, he wanted to do an experiment to see like, if I ground myself into the earth, what might happen? It was the first night he was able to sleep without needing a painkiller. Wow. He like was like, okay, I'm on to something. There's something here. So then came many, 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 many years of research. And this is what sort of sparked it. So while he was in Sedona, this big tour bus uh, got let off wherever he was. And out came all these women and they all had on white sneakers, like pristine white sneakers. And he was like, all I could focus on was the sneakers. It's all I could see. I couldn't see the people. I just saw the shoes. And he thought, that's so interesting that at all times, we have something that separates us from the earth. Let's, I think maybe that thought came first. And then he did the, the coil mm -hmm. and connected mm -hmm. it to his bed. <clears throat> so... Clint Ober theorizes that one of the single worst decisions that was made in like the history of ever was in the 1960s, um, I believe the 50s and the 60s, a synthetic rubber was created and all the shoes began to have these rubber soles, which like asphalt block that electric like communication. I have it heard just that. Totally yeah. disconnects you from the earth. Um, so he's like, I think this was the biggest mistake that was ever made. Like it was, mm -hmm. it disconnected us from the earth. He said, when I grew up, we were barefoot all the time. Or if we had shoes, they were like leather. And then if mm -hmm. they, you know, if it was raining, you took them off and you walked barefoot. Like that was how he grew up. And between, okay. In 1960, less than 5% of shoes had a rubber sole. Today, 95% of all people wear rubber-soled shoes. The 1960s also began the rise of autoimmune diseases. There's like a crazy correlation. Mm. And it could be other things. It could be the way we manufacture wheat. It could be all sorts of things. I am not a medical expert. This is just information. But it, that yeah, I it's gathered. interesting correlation. It's a really interesting correlation because before the 19th, like there's, and he, he said, um, autism, lupus, MS, diabetes, even indigestion and cancer are, are a result of chronic inflammation and all these things, autoimmune diseases is, is chronic inflammation in one way or another. Mm -hmm. I so, that too. so he theorizes that it's because of these rubber soled shoes. It's because we've cut ourselves off from the earth. And he also had an interesting point where he said, you know, animals that live outdoors aren't getting autoimmune diseases, but the ones who live in our homes, the dogs and the cats, they're getting arthritis. They're getting, you know what I mean? Like it's this interesting, oh. he's like the animals that live outside don't. 
I didn't fact check that. So you can, if that interests you, check it out. Um, so the theory is that we start building up a lot of quote, dirty electricity in our body and a, and that there is a sea of electrons laying on the earth. So we're like really, really, really positively charged. I mean, right now I'm looking at a laptop. There's a Wi-Fi thing plugged in. There's le- like there's nothing but electric charge all around us all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a beautiful gift in that. What a what a lovely luxury that we have electricity. Okay, but we're not balancing it out or releasing it in any way. So when we ground our body equalizes with the earth and maintains a natural surface charge. And I watched so many videos where people would hold an electricity meter and they would be wearing their shoes and their numbers would be really high. And the second they took those shoes off and touched the earth, it went down to zero or near zero. Because I mean, we have an electric magnetic electromagnetic field that extends out like four feet from us in every direction, mm-hmm. right? You taught you taught me yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they can measure it. Like it's insane. It's so cool. So if we're not consciously spending time the way that we historically for the majority of human history always have, which is outdoors with the earth in nature, touching the ground, Mm -hmm. we just start building up this dirty electricity. And the more of that that we have, the more inflammation that we have. And I just thought that was so interesting. Um, I also love, he does sell some earthing products. I absolutely bought two mats because I'm like, I'm going to put it under my feet. I'm going to put it under my pillow. Like, I'm so excited. But the idea really, it's like, it just didn't feel profit driven. It was like, I'm telling you what will happen to you when you go outdoors. <laughs> I'm telling you mm-hmm. what will happen to you. We are all, we live in our, our apartments and our homes. We work in our cubicles and our building, like whatever our lifestyle is. How much time are we really spending like sitting outside with our feet in the grass or like walking around barefoot? Like it's probably yeah. not too often for most of us. And he argues that you can't have inflammation in a grounded body, that it's like, not possible. And they did a study. So here's where the studies come in. I love this. So they did a study at the Hershey Clinic in Pennsylvania. And, you know, all these little preemie babies, they live for a while in those incubators. And there's so much machinery and EMF and noise. And there's just, they're plugged into this and monitored by this. And mm-hmm. it can stress up. It's, it's a lot of electricity, right? So they did this experiment where they did electrical grounding. They probably put them on a little mat and that mat has a little coil that plugs into, you know how a socket has three holes? Mm -hmm. It plugs into the bottom hole because that's the grounding plug. I didn't know that either. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. And so they discovered that the vagal tone, which is the measure of cardiovascular function, it significantly improved in preemies. Like they function, like their their vitals went up, their numbers went up, like everything was wow. like very observably significantly improved from them being plugged into the earth. And mm-hmm. it only takes 15, 20 to 30 minutes a day to start seeing results. So it's not about like, well, I don't have time for six hours. <laughs> You know, it's about, it's so funny to like, he was talking about the fact that he grew up in very close either community or proximity to um, a Native American community. Mm-hmm. And there was this little girl who got really, really sick. And the doctors were like, well, there's nothing we can do. Like there was nothing they could do for her. And so he has this vivid memory as a little boy of like walking over and they dug this big hole in the earth and they put her in that hole. I mean, they didn't cover her. I was like, where is this going? (laughs) They just let her (laughs) like like rest in it. And they lit a big fire near her. And like four days later, she came out and she was good as new. And he never forgot that. And it's just like this, this 
it's I feel so silly being like, can you believe this new thing I discovered that like cultures for <laughs> thousands of years are like duh. <laughs> so well, that I was, think that's it's like often the simplest things that we're we know like we've always known it was good for us, even if we didn't totally understand the details. But then it's like, mm. sometimes when things are so simple, it's like, well, I can do it later. Well, I can do it tomorrow. You know, it's it's just like, well, it's always available to me. So I'll, I'll just put it off for later. And it's mm -hmm. just like, no, just make the time because it can be so significant. Oh, my God. Absolutely. You know, he was explaining that our adrenals, our cortisol, our stress level, it's mm -hmm. like never been higher. And as these things spike it like we need to balance it out and he believes that as important as it is for us to eat food and drink water and move our bodies and all like breathe air we need to ground like we absolutely need to the before and after pictures were shocking i was shocked i'm a magical believer and i also like for it to be proven to me <laughs> and it was like this person before sleeping on a grounding mat, this person after the inflammation like shrunk, the pain shrunk. Here's this person um, before grounding outside for 30 minutes. Here's their blood flow after. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And so sciencedirect.com says, Grounding provides an improved distribution and balance of blood and lymph circulation. The Journal of Inflammation Research says that it helps with inflammation, immune response, wound healing, prevention, and treatment of chronic inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. And they find that grounding improves sleep, normalizes the cortisol rhythm reduces stress and shifts the autonomic nervous system from sympathetic to parasympathetic, which we know is like the whole reason why we meditate. Yep. Get out of fight or flight. And so if you're like, I need to go touch grass, it's really that simple. 15, 20, 30 minutes a day minimum. And if you can't, you can order a grounding mat. I saw some on Amazon for like $29. I got the fancier one that was connected to him because I just like what he's doing and I kind of wanted to support him. Um, and they also make uh, earthing shoes where they put this like copper coil or this copper coin or something. It goes like under your heel. So no matter where you're walking, even though your feet are protected in shoes, like you're constantly getting the benefits mm. of grounding. And so I... I'm just like, I am blown away by this obvious, simple thing. And there was another article I saw that was saying like, doctors need to be including this in the treatment plan of their patients. Mm -hmm. Like it's unfair that they're not. And I, you know, I, I think that there's a lot of magic in modern medicine and... <laughs> If this is going to significantly, from a proven scientific perspective, reduce pain, reduce inflammation, like get this dirty electricity out of your body, what like it should be happening. We should all be doing it all the time, but we are wearing these rubber soled shoes and we're staying inside all day and and yeah. So what was your favorite thing that you learned, Sadie? <laughs> Well, I, I guess it makes sense, but I didn't realize. So obviously like right now I'm living back at home uh, and the ground is frozen. So I'm not about to go barefoot out. The snow is melting, but the ground is still frozen. I'm not about to go stand barefoot out there, but I could go out there and just hug a tree for a while. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the trees. Or touch a leaf. You could put one finger on a leaf mm -hmm. and it would work. So that's exciting. And then somebody could touch you and then they would also be grounded. And yeah. then somebody could touch them. Like it's it's wild. So my neighbors are going to see me outside just hugging her tree for the rest mm -hmm. of my time at home. <laughs> uh, so I loved that. Um, and, you know, I think that's, that's the, the thing about 
unfortunately, at least in the U.S. with our modern medicine, like so much of it is one, sadly, very profit based. So Mm -hmm. it's like a lot of things to cover up um, the root of the problem. And it's not necessarily the doctor's fault because I was amazed. I learned that like learning how the immune system functions is not a part of medical school, which is bizarre to me because our immune system determines our health, right? It's, yeah. I would. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's a hundred percent of the time, or at least a lot of the time. Um, but it's it's so. I'm very thankful that I grew up in a family like my mom was a nurse modern medicine, but she was also very much into homeopathic medicine. So I almost never um, took like Tylenol or Advil or anything, Arnica, any any of my other homeopathic kids out there, you know what I'm talking about. Arnica, whenever you get a bruise, you bump your knee, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, you know, whatever. And she was in, you know, in energy healing and all of this stuff. And I think it's like modern medicine has so many gifts to it, especially when it comes to surgeries we're able to perform and things like that. But I think our real health happens when we're able to combine them. That's where the, Mm -hmm. you know, the magic is, is being, because there's so much when it comes to our physical health and our mental health that we could see so much healing in such simple ways that just not everyone knows about. And thankfully, you know, we're learning more and more because we live in such a technological world where we have so much information at our fingertips. So it becomes easier and easier to go to the doctor and do your own research and find alternative, you know, paths to go down. Um, But it's, yeah, it's really cool how simple something like just standing barefoot in the grass 15 minutes a day could have, such significant healing effects. It's exciting. And I'm, I definitely felt because I used to do that every day, like sit outside on the grass and like have my breakfast every morning. Um, And it definitely was hard coming home and not doing that anymore. Like I felt it was like really hard. Like it really like it was really, well, you guys remember, I was messing with my circadian rhythm because I was like not getting that sunlight and not being outside and not grounding and all of that. And I didn't even know, you know, all of this information, but I could definitely feel the difference. And that's one of the things I'm looking forward to. I'll try to go outside and sit by the tree if I can, if it's not too snowy, but um, so I'll see how that goes. It's been pretty cold here again, but, uh, I'm excited to just be back in California and that it'll be nice when I go travel, um, and just find like parks and nice areas to sit every day and like, just connect with the earth. It's there's magic all around us. There it's is amazing. magic all around us. <laughs> I love that. I believe that. It's so cool. I, you know, it's like how miraculous and how magical that it's like the earth. I don't know. It's, it's the freaking earth. It's the earth. The earth can literally heal us. Just the, the earth as it is. It's not doing anything special. It's not standing on the earth and you have to wave a wand or have a special magic box or something. <laughs> like you just stand <laughs> on it and, and it'll, you know. it'll help you. I, I want to have a lot. Oh, go on. No, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I liked how you said it could even help prevent uh, autoimmune and inflammatory diseases because that Mm -hmm. definitely runs in my family. And I've always been sort of like feeling like a ticking time bomb, like, oh, no, like when is it going to happen? But I'm like, no, I can – I have more control over this maybe (laughs) than I think. (laughs) So that's exciting. I've learned – from so many different things. I feel like every time I watch a documentary about the power of the mind or anything that mm-hmm. comes back to our ability to heal ourselves, it's always quoted every book I read about this, everything. It's always quoted that like the root of most illness, if not all, is at its core inflammation. And mm-hmm. So it's like, like when I was going to the Ayurvedic doctor, it was like, well, these are inflammatory foods and this, you know, this and that. It's all about 
all these different like ancient medicine, ancient practices, like they all come back to like things that reduce inflammation because it starts with inflammation and then it turns into illness. And so right. it's just, yeah, it's just about taking the practical small steps to reduce inflammation. And obviously you just feel better too. Like, and you, you can see it. I'll, I'll look back at, um, you know, like photos when I was just like drinking a lot and not doing well mentally. And you can just see just like, you know, I've always kind of been the same. I haven't really like gained a lot or lost a lot of weight in my life. My weight doesn't fluctuate a lot, but you can see the inflammation just in the face, the difference of Mm. that. And it's pretty incredible where I can look back and know that at that time I was really struggling and not taking good care of myself. And and it's just like puffier and it's just the inflammation. You can see it physically. (laughs) And then I'll, you know, look at another time where I'm like, oh, you know, now I'm doing so much better and there's a lot less inflammation. Um, When I'm having trouble with my gut, that's inflammation. I can see it in my face again. It's really interesting. And it's not about that I'm gaining or losing weight. It's just that you're able to tell a lot by that. So I have uh, an invitation for everybody listening. Go put your feet in grass or whatever's doable for you hug a tree <laughs> with your weather for conditions. our frozen girlies <laughs> hug a and tree. tag us in your stories be like earthing check at goddess Hangs. i want to see it <laughs> i want to um, celebrate your commitment to your health and your mm-hmm. and your electric balance charge oh i gotta sneeze oh no oh no <coughs> <coughs> Okay. Ah. God is bless you. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting till you were done. A cold is fun. Okay. Oh, it's almost better. Do your qigong again today. Okay, I will. <laughs> I'll do my qigong. <laughs> it's also good for inflammation. <laughs> I'm like the vision of health telling you all what to do for your health. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that concludes my little grounding master class. Oh gosh, well, it's because it's simple, you know, it's like it's so inspiring. Yeah. Grounding. We're all gonna go do some grounding. Yes, we are. <laughs> Juliet needs to go outside after this. I need to Her go poor somewhere. little cold. Go barefoot. It's okay. Oh it's okay. Gosh. You know what? You know when you get a cold when you're eight and it's just like a level three cold, but it's just annoying. Yeah. It's or I guess I... at any age. <laughs> Specifically eight. I mean, Ugh. in the past, since I've been home in Wisconsin, I got a cold like four different times every time I went outside. So I know that feeling. Yeah. And then you always, this is what, every time I have a cold, I just sit there breathing through my mouth and just like <sighs> thinking about like, I can't uh-huh. believe I took for granted all the times I could breathe through my nose. <laughs> yeah. How easily. That's <laughs> all I think ahead. about. I'm like. <sighs> wow. I was an ungrateful <laughs> bitch. <I'm> so- <laughs> and here I am over here breathing through my nose. Not a thought uh. in the world grateful nose thank you sinuses thank you thank you sinuses you need to rest i am congested i am perfectly completely (laughs) whatever the tapping is i got i gotta go (laughs) we gotta wrap it up (laughs) Uh uh-oh Okay, well, remember, everyone, we have a new 50-page, 51-page Witchcraft for Beginners guidebook. Go download it in our show notes. Go check out all of the Bali details. Uh, Join us in the Alchemy Collective. We have a lot of magic uh, the rest of the month in February, and March is all about big, bold action. The spring equinox is happening, the astrological new year, the new moon in Aries. It's all very exciting, the work we're doing there. Make sure you're following us on social media. Our handles are the same on TikTok and Instagram at Goddess Hangs, at I am Sadie Olson, and at Juliet.Piper. Make sure you're following us. There's lots of goodies in our show notes. We're so grateful for you. Go stand barefoot on the ground or hug a tree, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.